Strategy and management, we avoid conflict and coaching. We embrace it. I have three beautiful daughters. I'm not ashamed to tell you. I know every Frozen song there is. We'll suck the life out of them. Oh, I was with you until we said fire. I got four employees, one short. I got to work more hours. I'm out. Danny said earlier, Nathan's going to tell you, if you believe, you'll achieve. And I agree with that, because I believe if you don't believe, you have no chance of achieving. But belief is purely the beginning. And here's what I mean. When you believe that you can achieve greatness in anything, then you will actually have the conviction to do the work. But if you don't have the belief, your conviction never comes. So belief creates conviction, and conviction gives discipline, and discipline gives results. A great coach has no issues embracing conflict. They'll tell you when your breath stinks, they'll tell you when you're doing something wrong, and they're not doing it to be mean. They literally are doing it because they genuinely care about making you better. Hold your people accountable. It's better for the individual, they'll become a better human being. It's better for your company, the one you own and you sweat for. It's better for your teammates and it's better for your customers. Accountability is the most selfless act you can do. Nathan Jamal, he's one of the best speakers that uh, we've had at our organization. Worldwide, we've had him in four different countries around the world, which has just been great. It's not about telling our people that sells the relationship business. It's about helping them become better at it and developing us and coaching our people to excellence. And at the end of the day, the real difference between coaching and managing is implementing and holding accountable the disciplines of practice. It's not abnormal for us to know that a basketball or a baseball player must practice to be better or play in sports. The same thing happens in business. Training is when we learn something new. Practicing is getting better at what we already know. Athletes practice 90% of the time and they play the game 10% of the time. And when an athlete says practice isn't important, we think he's nuts or she's nuts because that culture and sports, we know if you want to play well, you got to practice well. I'm going to challenge you if you want to be a professional in business, you got to learn to practice to be a professional. Practice isn't about not being good. Practice is about how do I get better no matter how good I am. Hi, my name is Mike Leathers. I've been in the heavy building construction materials business for the past 25 years. And Nathan Jamel is the best speaker at a company event we have ever had. Who in the room likes to role play? Who likes to role play? One person. Sir, I mean at work, not at home. Why do we hate to role play? Give me some reasons. Shout them out. Come on. It's uncomfortable. Back row, let me hear you. Why else? We're insecure. What else? It's embarrassing. We might stink. I told the leaders yesterday, I'm like, you know why the managers don't want to role play with their employees? It's because they're, God forbid, the employees find out the managers aren't any good. And I, I didn't, don't worry, I got your back, baby. I told them. I said, they think you stink anyway. Don't worry about it. See, I believe corporate America ruined role play because we use it to judge people like oh you think you know how to serve a customer you think you know how to talk to a partner you think you know you think you know you think you know let's go and it's a pop quiz and if you had schooling like me I flunked every one of them and so we ruined it because it's a judgment what I'm going to challenge you to do is start in learning to scrimmage because the behavior of getting into character and practicing it is a great thing to do. It makes us better every time. The problem is when we fear judgment or we fear it's a pop quiz, we don't want to do it. And we have every excuse it's fake. Of course it's fake. We hope it's fake. But so is scrimmaging in sports, but the athletes do that, right? We, we say we don't have enough time, but think about this for a minute. I mean, sometimes it takes us weeks and months to get an opportunity to talk to a partner or a customer. And we've traveled many distances to go see them. What, are we going to wing it? And we do it all the time. It's crazy. My challenge to you is this. Don't role play anymore. Scrimmage. And there's a difference. It's not just difference in words. It's difference in intent. 
So if I was your boss, I would make you scrimmage. But here's what I'll tell you. I want a real genuine scrimmage. I want to get into character. I want to try something out. And I want it to stink. Try something new. Right? Don't tell me what I want to hear. Try it without. The whole idea of scrimmaging is preparing us for success. We can't get to the next level doing what we did last month or last year. The only way we get to the next level is we learn to practice and scrimmage and get into character before we do it. So let me ask you a question. Give me your name, dear. Just like me. Stephanie, Nathan, nice to see you. Stephanie, if you and I were having a partner meeting on Tuesday and you and I got into character and we scrimmaged it three or four times, what are the chances we'd be better than if we didn't scrimmage at all? Does everyone agree with that? Came in, delivered uh, meaningful content in a highly passionate way and in a very entertaining manner, which kept everybody engaged. The only way to make anything like what I do in speeches worth the time or the money is, is something that has a sustainable change in people. Um, and, and that's the guy I want to be. I want to be the person that triggers that change for them. I don't know if I care if you say Nathan Jamel was a nice guy. I'd rather see Nathan Jamel change my life. One of the biggest struggles in business and all leadership teams is this, complacency. I, it doesn't matter if I'm doing an event for, for financial planners making half a million dollars a year or if I'm doing it for the, the pipe manufacturing company for the factory workers making uh, 5, 10, 20 bucks an hour. It doesn't matter which group it is. Complacency is a problem because complacency isn't about money. Complacency is about the person and the culture in which they live in versus thrive in. See, when we become complacent, we've been doing something a long time, but we're not growing anymore. When we stop trying to get better, we can become complacent and, and, and we get bored. And the next step after complacency is failure every time. The power is not being complacent, but being content. See, content says, I love where I'm at. I'm happy with what I do. I am so content with my career, but I desire a lot more. The principles and philosophies that you shared with the team still resound with us today, six months afterwards. Again, Nathan, I want to say thank you very much. You are the real deal. This is Jason. And last night, I was trying to find bungalow or room 974-47. Has anybody else been lost like 15 times? I'm so glad. I literally walked around my little room area like six times. And people were like, I think he's drunk. <laughs> and so I'm, well, I'm trying to get to this party that we were doing last night because I wanted to go. No one invited me, but I'm going. And so I'm trying to find this place. And there's these three dudes with white hats that walk up. And this is Jason. And I say, excuse me, do you know where room 947 is? And you could, you know, in their body hit language, they're going, he didn't see the white hat? <laughs> he wants to cook you something, we're in. But they did. Jason says, oh my gosh, let me, let me, I don't, I, I'm not from this property. But if you have a map, let me help you find it. I'm like, you're my boy. So he pulls the map out, he's over my shoulder. He's like, okay, it's right here, right here. He doesn't give me the finger. He doesn't go, it's that way. He says, come on, I'll walk you. This dude walked me past like three deserts, a 14th swimming pools, and a camel. Because it's hot out there. Camel fell down right in front of us. And so I go, Jason, and they, what really made Jason so remarkable isn't that day he walked me there. But his, I said, I always ask people, I said, well, how long have you been working here? He goes, I don't work here. I work at the Biltmore in Arizona. He goes, I get, I get to come here. And I went, what a job. And he says, I get to come here and work with events like this. And I said, that's awesome. I said, what do you do? He says, I'm an executive sous chef. I'm like, wow, cool. I can't even cook eggs. He says, but I'm so, I, I, I feel indebted to Hilton. Because I started out as an inline cook and now I'm sous chef. And one day I want my own hotel. And he's going to get it. Mark my word, he's going to get it. Not because of how smart he is or he walks me over to the room, but because of his attitude and everything that creates of him. So if you see Jason, say, hey, I hear you're a stud. He probably made your lunch today, by the way. Yeah, you see, tell him. I got in the franchise because I do one thing. I knew what made me successful is my entrepreneurial spirit, right? I love it when people say, Nathan, I want to own my own business. 
I want to work my own hours. That's my favorite. It's good news. You're getting all of them. You get every single one of them. And guess whose paychecks don't get deposited last? Yours. We have to man mandate that we and our team members have the mindset that they believe. And lastly, we have to hold people accountable because we care. Being the intangible affects your life just like your business. Be and coach the intangible. Thanks.